I'd want to say that it is an honourable, it is an honourable path to take. Um, but we do it not in our own strength, we do it in the strength of God. Um, many people will ask me from time to time, how do you do this? And, you know, gosh, how do you cope with all of that? And I says, I don't think about it because I knew that if I was to sit down and, and think, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing the other, it would be impossible and it wouldn't happen. So I trust God, trusting in God, being rooted. I think you, we have to be rooted, not in another pastor. That is always a danger. And I see it very often around me, is that people become becomes rooted in a tradition, in a particular style. Um, and then when things fall apart, one's ministry falls apart. You know, Paul in 1 Corinthians, had quite a lot to say about the church in Corinth taking sides and you know I'm from Apollos and I'm from Cephas and I'm from this and, and Paul says hang on a minute who died for you was it Paul was it Apollos was it Cephas no it was Christ and so I think when you are centered on Christ then all the other things become they pale into insignificance it becomes irrelevant you see, within the Bible, there is a section, I think it's in Timothy, I think it's Timothy, I can't remember exactly, where, where it says women should be silent in the church. And for many, many years, those from a very low evangelical tradition who takes things word for word, has said, see, women should not be in leadership. You know, it should be a man, etc. I want to say that that is a mere interpretation, and that I do believe that women should be in leadership, young women, old women, women generally. We are called by God. We are beautifully and wonderfully made in His image. And as such, as baptized Christians, we all have the potential for vocation to ministry. And so I would want to encourage young women not to listen to that lie that says women should not speak in the church. <laughs> I think I would have to say Sunday school teachers when I was little. Sunday school teachers have been, um, I, and I, I happen to have had a, a couple of really good God parents who were deeply devout to their faith. And, and, and yeah, I was, I was very lucky because you know, they've, they've been good models for me. I think a good leader needs to be someone with integrity. A good leader, but first and foremost, I think a good leader needs to love the people whom they serve. And notice I say serve, because that's what we do, we serve them. Um, and we need to recognize that, you know. So often, I think, within the, the, the Christian tradition, unfortunately, and I'm not where, sure where it came from because it's not really there as such in the Bible um, in the same way. But we put people on pedestals and then we knock them off. We knock them off it. So, so I, I think a good leader, the sort of father knows best thing doesn't work. I think a good leader encourages all his people um, and doesn't give the impression that they are the, you know, the, they alone 
carry the fountain of wisdom. Um, but, but if I had to top any of the, that, I would say a good leader loves.